everyone and welcome back to Brush and Bubble. I'm Lara and today I'm going to be taking you through another painting tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a beach scene with a little umbrella in it. So for this you will need your canvas, a palette for your paints, a couple of different size paint brushes, whichever paint brushes you prefer. I've got a sort of medium one and then a small one for the details, some kitchen towel and a cup of water. I will be showing you what paints we're going to be needing for this painting once we get started. But again, you can just use any colours that you wish. But without further ado, let's get started. So for this painting, I have got on my palette some white, blue, green, yellow, red and a little bit of black. But again, you can use any colours that you wish. I've also got another plate here just in case I want to do any mixing on it later. What we want to do to begin with is just map out where we want our scene to be. So I've got my canvas in portrait. Equally, you can have it in landscape. It's totally up to you. And all we're going to do to start with is with our smaller brush, just make a really light blue colour. So that's just white and then a little bit of blue. So to start with, we want to decide where we want our sky to come down to. So I'm just going to find about halfway along the canvas and bring it up slightly and just do a line all the way across. It doesn't need to be neat. We're going to go over it it's just so we can see what we're doing. Once you're happy with your horizon line, we're now just going to add a sort of rough guide where we want our sea to come to. So where the ocean meets the sand. So for this, you can have a little bit more of a wobbly line. And I'm just gonna bring my C to around here and I'm just gonna create this wobbly, wobbly line. Again, wrapping it around the sides to cover it all up. Once you're happy with how that's looking, just give your little brush a good wash. We're now gonna move over to our big brush and we just want to create the color for the top section of our sky. So this is gonna be the darker section. So what I would do is just pick up some white paint as your base. I'm just going to move it over to one of my little dishes and I'm going to add some blue paint and give it a good mix. Once you're happy with the colour for the top section of your sky, I would just add a tiny bit of water to it just to make it more fluid. And once you've done that, we're just going to move over to our canvas and paint this on the top section. So I would come down about an inch or two, depending on what size canvas you're using. But I'm just going to draw in where I'd like this to come to, and it's about there. And then you can just go in and fill in all the way up to the top. Once you've covered up the top section of your sky, we're just going to change the colour up slightly. So I want to make it a little bit lighter, but I'm also going to add a tiny hint of green to the sky as well, just to give it more of a tropical feel. So I'm just going to add a little bit more white to this mixture. And then I'm going to introduce a tiny, tiny bit of green, just a small amount because it goes quite a long way. And all we're going to do with this is blend it in to the colour we've got before. So the way I blend, and if you've watched some of our other videos, you'll see that I've talked about this before, is I like to get all of the paint off my brush and onto the canvas. So I paint a line underneath my previous shade. And once most of my paint is off my brush, I just go back in with a really light touch and drag it up and blend it into that previous shade and then bring previous shade down into this colour and we just want to make sure we're not seeing that line. It's quite nice if you get a few streaks in there like that just because it looks like it's texture in the sky. Then just fill this, this colour that we've just done all the way down to our horizon line. Once you are happy with your sky, we're now going to move on to the colour for our C. So for this, we just want to darken up the shade slightly. So what I would do is go back to the shade you just had and just add a little bit more white as the base. This time we're going to add more blue. So I'd pick up some blue, give it a really good mix in there. You might also like to add a tiny bit of green to it as well. 
the shade and it's definitely darker than the top section of your sky. We're now just going to focus this towards the back of our sea. So this is the sea that's nearest our sky and our horizon line. So what I would do is just start brushing this on to the canvas side by side motions and then as your sky is drying you can then just overlap the water with the sky. We want the sky to look like it's coming down behind the sea and we want this line to be as straight as possible. Again, don't worry if it's not straight, if that's the way you're going with your painting. If you want to be more abstract, it doesn't need to be straight. You can go a little bit more wobbly. So once you've got that in there, what you can do if you want to is pick up some pure blue and just add it in, just as like little streaks in there. We want this to be quite textured and have lots of different shades in the sea, just to give it more of a realistic touch just because there are loads of different tones and textures and movement in the water. So we just want to make sure we've added that in there, blending it in with the paint that's already wet on the canvas. Once we're happy with that, we're just going to lighten up this colour a bit. So I've got quite a lot in this dish, so all I'm going to do is pick some up and move it to another dish. And all I'm going to add to this is a little bit of white and a tiny bit more green and give that a good mix. Once you're happy with your next shade, we're going to do the same thing we did with the sky. But you can be more choppy with this movement, you don't have to be as smooth. We're just going to get all the paint off the brush, underneath this colour, and then blend it in. Just with a light touch. Again, don't forget to do the sides. Once you've got that section in there, we're now just going to lighten up the paint even more. So I'm just going to take the same dish I had here and I'm going to add a little bit more white to it and a tiny bit more green because this is where we're getting into our shallower water. So we want the paint to be lighter. I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of water to it and mix it in as well. We're now just going to do the same thing and we're going to bring this colour down to meet our line that we created at the beginning. And you can actually bring it down just below it if you wish as well. And then again, just blend it up into that previous shade. And you can actually drag this color up quite a bit into the sea, just because it's nice to blend it because the paint is still wet on the back of our canvas. It's quite nice just to add that in there. Makes it look natural. And if you push down a little bit heavier with your brush, you'll see you get like a streak in there. You might like that. All we want to do now, and this is the bit that we're going to end up blending in with our sand. We just want to add a little bit of water to our brush. So I'm actually not going to wash off this paint. I'm going to leave that on there. I'm just going to pick up some water and mix it into another dish or another space on your palette or plate and just made a, make a really watered down consistency. So that was just a couple of drops of water in with the paint already on your brush. And what we're gonna do with this is just scrape off the excess. We're gonna go back into this section of our canvas and we're just gonna lightly blend in this sort of wash consistency in with the last shade we had for our C. And this is just so we can blend our sand into it. So once you've added that sort of wash consistency at the end, we're just going to wash off our medium brush. We're now going to make a light sand colour. So for this, we just want to start with white as our base. And then we want to add a tiny, tiny bit of yellow and a tiny, tiny bit of red and give it a good mix. Once you're happy with the colour of your sand, we're now just going to add this to the bottom section of our painting. So I would start at the very, very bottom and get all the paint off your brush and leave a line here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make a more wash-like consistency to then blend it in to the wash we had for the sea. So focus this all along the bottom. You can do the sides and the very base of the canvas and then we'll go back in. Once you've filled that section in, we're essentially going to do the same thing we did with the sea. So we're just going to leave this sand colour we've got on our brush, pick up a little bit of water and then just mix it in on your palette just to make a more watered down consistency. 
and then we'll go back in with this shade. We might do a little dance between this consistency and the thicker one. But essentially, all we want to do is with a light touch, is just fill in this gap with the more watered down paint. And then when we meet the C, again with a light touch, and you might want to add a tiny bit more water to your mixture. You just want to go in and sort of blend it in really gradually with that C. So it looks a little bit more shallow. Once you've done that, I wouldn't worry too much about it because we're going to be adding a load of sort of sea foam and waves and where the shore, um, where the sea meets the shore, we're just going to have like little lumps and bumps of white paint. So for this, I would just wash off your medium brush. We're now just going to go in with some white paint. So we just want to pick up a little bit of white and then dab it off on the side of our plate. What we're going to do with this white paint is we're just going to dab it into the sea. And now the trick is here, we don't want too much paint on our brush. So what I would suggest doing is dabbing it off slightly on your kitchen towel before you go in. And I actually go in at a sort of angle and I use a sort of like etching, scrapey motion with my brush. And if you just start really gradually adding this to your sea along lines and just change it up a bit, it just adds sort of movement in the water. And the nice thing about painting the sea is that it's quite abstract and free. You don't have to overthink this. And again, just having less paint on your brush is always better because you can go back in and add some more in if you wish. And you can have areas that are slightly thicker. And I'm almost just like sort of dashing the paintbrush onto the canvas. And you can have areas on top which you might have a little bit more foam and spray. And then when we get to the shoreline, we just want to make sure this line here is sort of covered. So I'm going to be quite thick with the paint I'm adding here. Again, just dashing it on and adding some extra thick bits. And then sort of scraping it on. It's just sort of experimenting and getting a feel. But we're essentially just using the brush to help us create this effect just by dabbing it on and dashing it on there so pick your brush of choice you might want to have a little experiment with a couple of different brushes you might also want to just start dabbing it and it looks sort of like a little bit of spray coming up into the sea and down into the sand if you want to you can always pick up a little bit more blue paint and start mixing that in there as well to create a few highlights and shade. Either way, the lines are going to be a lot thinner and a lot fainter. So for this, I would just water down your paintbrush, dab it on your kitchen towel, make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush, and then you can just very lightly add a few dashes in the distance. Once you're happy with that section, I would pick up your tiny little brush and just pick up a small amount of white paint, dab it on your kitchen towel, and then you can go in and if you want to, you can add a few little like dots and sprays of water sort of coming down onto where the sand is and above it, just to add a few extra details if you want to. Once you're happy with that, we're going to leave it to dry for about 10 minutes or you can give it a blast with the hairdryer and then we'll come back and do our beach umbrella. So once your painting is nice and dry, I've actually got a little bit here that's um, a little bit wet. I want it to stay thick, so I'm going to avoid that. All we're going to do now with our small brush is just sketch in where we want our umbrella to go. So I might have mine coming up at an angle. Um, but what I'm going to do to start with is just paint it in with white paint, just so it's a little bit less scary, and then we can go in and fill it all in. So with my small brush, I'm just picking up a little bit of paint. And essentially what we want to do is start with the top of our umbrella. So it's sort of like a dome shape. So I'm just going to paint that in now really carefully.
And then once you've got the rough outline of the shape, don't worry about the middle bit because we're going to be filling that all in. So it's quite nice that you can sort of be a bit more sketchy. What we're then going to do is just add the sort of bits that are underneath and they sort of come up in little domes, just like a normal umbrella. And then once you've got that in there, you can fill in that whole middle section with white paint. So once you've got the basic shape of the top of our umbrella in there, we're just going to leave it to dry. And while we leave it to dry, we just want to create the colour for the sort of pole that comes down into the sand. So for this, I'm going to create a brown colour. So you need some white, blue, yellow, red, and a tiny bit of black paint. And give that a good mix and that should make brown. What we're then going to do is just paint in our pole. So for this, we just want to do a line from the middle of our umbrella all the way down to meet the sand. So I would just take your time. A nice thin line is good because we can always make it thicker. And you can always start from the pole, from the sand and then paint the pole upwards. Once you're happy with your pole, all we want to do while we're still waiting for the top section of our umbrella to dry is just create a little bit of shadow in the sand. So for this, I'm just going to use the brown I've still got on my brush, but I'm going to mix it up with a little bit of this colour that we had for our sand. So if you run out of the sand colour, just mix it up again using the white, yellow and red. But if you're okay, just pick up a bit of that colour the sand and just add that brown to it. And it's only going to change the colour up slightly, but it just gives us a slightly darker shade. So just make sure you haven't got too much paint on there. You want it to be fairly dry. And to start with, all we want to do is sort of etch a little bit of this colour just around the base of this pole. And because the pole's still a bit wet, it should just sort of merge in. And this will just make it look like there's movement in the sand. Just to help with our shadows, we just want more of a wash consistency. So what I would suggest doing is just adding a tiny bit of water to that same shade, the one that we've mixed with the brown and the sand colour together. So I'm thinking I might have mine coming like off the side, just subtly where the pole would be and then it might get a little bit bigger as I meet the end of the canvas but it is just a subtle suggestion a slight shadow there as another extra you can take some of this same color this one that we've sort of added the brown to the sand and if you want to you can go back in to the pole and just give it a little highlight so along one edge you might just want to Paint a sort of line overlapping it. So while we wait for that all to dry, we can now decide what colours we want to do our umbrella. So I'm going to do mine sort of striped colours. And I think I'm going to go for a pale pink and a pale yellow. So I'm just going to mix up those shades now. So that's just white as my base. And then I'm going to add some red to one of them and mix it up. And then I'm going to add yellow to the other one and mix it up. So once your um, umbrella is nice and dry, what we're going to do is just pick up your chosen colours. And essentially, we're just going to stripe these along the umbrella. So I'm going to pick up some yellow first. I'm just going to make sure I haven't got too much paint on my brush. But what I'm going to do is just angle your canvas to make sure you're happy with it. Is I'm just going to stripe up from the peaks of the bottom of the umbrella to the middle, a couple of stripes of yellow. Once you're happy with the yellow, I'm then just gonna wash off my brush and I'm gonna go back in with the pink. I'm just gonna draw these in, still curving them along. Once 
once you've got that in there, you might just want to thicken your lines out a bit. So I'm just going to make each of my lines slightly thicker. So once you've thickened out the stripes on the top of the umbrella and if you're happy with how it's looking, the last finishing touch is you could just add a couple of little birds in the sky. So for this, I'm just going to pick up some black paint and add a little bit of water to it. And we're just going to do tiny little either V's or elongated M shapes. So for this, by that I mean either a little V or an elongated M. So when you're ready, just very carefully with a small brush, you can just do two little birds or three little birds flying in the distance. So once you have added in your birds, you have completed your beach painting. Yay! <laughs>